I remember the exact time that I was that I thought it would be good to write the what the book is is a it's a celebration of running. I was someone who, who didn't run and I came to running in a sort of very traditional mid thirties kind of starting to spread out kind of way and then just realised how good running is just physically and mentally and how it gives you space mental space, physical space, space from other people, space as in you you know, you connect to your surroundings and, and it was in Richmond Park talking of surroundings, it was it was bitterly cold, I think it was January or February. And I was just running with a dog, um, on the way to pick up my well my son's school is right on the gate to Richmond Park. And I was a, I was freezing and my ears were cold, my my fingers I couldn't feel the ends of them and there was a low sun and I couldn't really see where I was going because it was blinding me. And I just thought, you know, under normal circumstances, I would be, you know, miserable. I'm cold. I'm out of breath. I'm running too fast. So I'm, you know, I'm not. I'm not comfortably running. I'm, you know, with a dog who's also. I'm, I'm, I've I've fallen over. I think one of my feet was wet in a puddle or something. You know, I had I had lots of physical things kind of wrong with me. But I just thought, gosh, you know, I've never been happier. I've just. I'm. I'm in this moment, wondering where to put my next footstep. What to, you know, what 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 tree root to. Um, to avoid where you know where to go, where, which plot up this hill, you know, and, and I just thought, well, it's, I mean, I'm not an expert, but this is isn't that what they call mindfulness? And I thought, well, if if some bloke like me can find anything approaching mindful state, you know, um, whilst running, then then anyone can. And I just thought it would be great to write a book celebrating that fact, that feeling, um, and with the sort of hope, but the sincerely felt hope that I might inspire maybe one or two other people to just give it a go and hope that they get, well if they get half as much out of running as I do, then all good. I didn't have a, a kind of a reading list and think I should, I should read those before I, before I write. I know a lot of authors do, I work with Chris Evans and he, in his um, call The Midlife, he, there's a little section on running and he read a load of running books before writing that little section. But I would probably, I don't know, I'd either get intimidated or I'd feel um, like all the good ideas have been taken. I had to sort of think, I've come into this in an original way, otherwise I'd, um, I don't know, this is my first book, so I, I, I felt it, it had to come from that way, not that way. Well, listen, I'm very lucky in my job. I'm a sports reporter and I kind of rub shoulders with, you know, the elite of world sport, really. And, and that is, that is a, a, as, as thrilling to me now as it was when I first started out as a sort of 18-year-old cub reporter. So I don't want to, I don't want to mention any names because obviously, you know, there are, there are Olympic gold medalists in that book and there are, you know, world record holders. And, 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 but I'll tell you what, I will, I will mention a guy called Ryan who I bumped into, literally bumped into, we... we coming around Hammersmith Bridge and we clashed heads and um, we were both a bit dazed and, and actually he's sort of initially a bit like well what are you doing and then we realised it was no one's fault and we sat down and had a little chat and he was telling me how you know he was excluded from school and he you know he was he said you know I was on a, a dangerous path I was on en route to prison and my uncle told me to start running and for the first time I did something that made me feel good about myself and then the you know I mean, I would put it this way, I don't think he did, but the, the vicious circle just got reversed into a virtuous circle that, you know, suddenly he's proud of himself. And, and, and that's the sort of guy that I, you know, that I really, not aspire to, but, um, but really admire. So uh, he's not an athlete, you know, he's just some bloke I met on Hammersmith Bridge, but the athletes are just, you know, inspirational in their own right. But that was the guy that really stood out for me, who I met and talked to for the book. And I just I was so pleased I had my phone on me at the time and I could record our conversation because I haven't seen him since. Very good question. Um, I, I I kind of didn't have time to write the book, but I really loved writing the book. Um, I am um, again talking to Chris because he was writing Call the Midlife at the same time as I was writing um, This Don't Stop Me Now, and he said to me, "Just clear four hours, and then you know you'll take half an hour to get into it, and then you might get." Kind of a couple of hours good work done then maybe you take a break and I, I kept looking for four hours and I've got a baby at home and I've got you know a radio job in the morning and a TV job in the evening and other kind of bits and bobs during the day and I just never had the four hours and when I did I felt so, so much pressure to sort of write that it didn't really come easily so then I was I was in um, 
a doctor's waiting room with my with my little girl, and uh, I just started writing on the on, on this on my on my phone, and I thought this is the way to do it. Just, I'll just write, yeah, you know, chapter one on the notes section, chapter two on the notes section, and so that's how I wrote it. I wrote it in little bits. You know, if I had half an hour here and there, I'd do that. If I had an hour, so much the better. But I did it largely on the phone, or if I was at home, my phone and my iPad seemed to be talking to each other quite nicely, so I did it on the iPad. But mostly, just on the phone. So uh, poor old Charlotte, the editor, when she uh, when she came to get the manuscript, there's well, there's twenty six point two, which is twenty seven chapters, plus twenty seven interviewees, plus a covering letter, plus a chapter order, plus a you know. So she got six sixty emails all all in one go from. Uh, from the notes section of my iPhone, so that's how I wrote it, not the sort of classic way. I'll put this down now. At one stage I thought I might run short of chapters, um, but then but then I didn't, and actually I was thinking, you know, I'm not going to include that, and I'm not going to include that. So. Um, there was a bit in the middle where I thought I, I better write down where I'm, you know, where I'm going with this because I'd sort of I started I'd written the end quite quite early on because, as I said, that was the sort of reason I'd written the book and it's nice to have something to sort of aim for. Um, and and I thought, well, have I got kind of twenty five, twenty six distinct little bits to talk about? And it, it turns out I had more. So um, I was worried at one stage that I'd I'd struggle to fulfil the brief of 26.2 chapters, which is my sort of silly idea in the first place. Um, but I, I didn't, I actually, I, I blissfully kind of, I had too much to say. I guess you'd say determination, wouldn't you? Um, and um, pretty much ends there. I mean, you know, don't give up. And also, I mean, somebody was asking me, it's... Um, it's the London Marathon this Sunday, and someone was asking me for advice, you know, their first time marathon runner. And I said, well, if you've done you know, 10 miles and you're feeling it, I mean, why wouldn't you be feeling it? You've run 10 miles after all. Um, and then if you think, gosh, I'm this tired now, and I've got 16 still to go, so another 10, and then another 6 on top of that, then you're, you know, you're, you're mentally gone. But if you just then get to the end of this mile marker, get to the end of this street, get to the next tree, it's a lot easier. And maybe that, you know, maybe that as well when you're writing a book. Don't think, I've still got 80,000 words to write because, you know, you're doomed. Where the 80,000 words come from? But eight words isn't the problem. So just get to the end of the sentence, end of the paragraph, end of the page, end of the chapter. Do you know, when I was writing it, I was thinking, gosh, you know, this is... Because there, there's an element, I love the writing of it, but there's an element where, you know... Whenever I wasn't writing, I was thinking I should be writing now, deadline's approaching, and when I was writing, I was thinking, you know, my poor wife, I've look after three children, and I'm sort of stuck in here, well, not stuck in here, but I'm in here, kind of feet up writing, and, and, and so I was kind of feeling a bit guilty, I thought, well, I'm not going to do another one, but having done it, it was such a lovely, it's sort of like a marathon, you know, you finish a marathon, you think, right, that was hard, I'm not doing it again, and then, you know, you get home that evening, and you think, well... Maybe I could do it again. So I'm I'm at that stage now. So maybe I could do it again. Genuinely, I would say. I mean, if it's I don't know about you know fiction, but um, I I assume that the same thing goes for fiction. It's just make it a sincerely, authentically held belief or or, or idea. You know, don't just do something because you think it might sell or you think it might be zeitgeisty do it because you really believe in it well that's that's what I did with this book I believe in how good running is and and it came easily and I think if, if there was any kind of you know faking it going on then I don't think I'd have I don't think I'd have enjoyed it and I don't think it would have I think it would have come across as well running my first marathon or writing my first book probably the marathon you know I think probably that the first marathon, I kind of, I hit a wall at about, it was, well it was in Spain, so it was in, all in kilometres, about 30 out of 42 kilometres. And those next 10 kilometres were really kind of big. And as I said, I thought I might struggle for content. I, I thought I might hit the kind of writing wall, and I never really did. So I suppose, strange as it may seem, uh, running a marathon harder than writing a book, who'd have thought so?